Hello, my name is Dr. Arun Sanyal. I'm a professor of medicine at the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Medicine, and I'm also the director of the Stravitz Sanyal Institute for Liver Diseases and Metabolic Health at VCU. Well, there are a lot of unmet needs in MASH treatment, but the greatest need probably is to develop effective therapeutics for those who have advanced fibrosis. The next greatest need is for people who have started scarring down their liver but have not yet developed cirrhosis. And then there is still a very untapped population for whom there are no specific guidances. And these are people with early stage disease where we still do not have an effective preventive paradigm uh, to prevent the development of more advanced disease. In the ESSENCE trial, which was recently published, it's a randomized controlled multicenter global trial where we took patients who had steatohepatitis established by liver biopsy, who also had stage two or three fibrosis. So this is the middle group that we were previously alluding to, those who have started scarring their liver but have not developed cirrhosis. And they were randomized to either receive placebo or 2.4 milligrams weekly of semaglutide. And after 72 weeks, a liver biopsy was performed to see if their histology improved, but with the caveat that the study is still ongoing and we want to see whether these changes in histology eventually translate into improved clinical outcomes. Well, the principal finding is that semaglutide not only improved the steatohepatitis, but also improved scarring. Now, let me tell you a little bit in more detail. So from the regulatory perspective, there are two concepts. There's a concept of disease activity, which is the amount of injury due to the fat in the liver. And then there is the concept of disease stage, which is the consequence of the activity and which is read out by the amount of scar tissue or fibrosis in the liver. For the FDA, one needs to demonstrate in the short term both improvement of fibrosis and steatohepatitis or convincing evidence of improvement of one of these. The good news with semaglutide is that both endpoints were met and there was a robust improvement both in steatohepatitis with 62-63% of patients achieving this endpoint and also regression of fibrosis in about 30 7% of individuals compared to about 22 or 24, 22% of people on placebo. Well, you know, a lot of patients who have MASLD uh, also have metabolic risk factors. They have underlying obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular disease. Many have type 2 diabetes. They have dyslipidemia. And we already know that GLP-1 receptor analogs demonstrate in this population that is enriched for these cardiometabolic risk factors. It improves obesity, it improves glycemia, it improves uh, triglycerides, it reduces cardiovascular mortality and MACE, it improves and stabilizes the renal function. So for all these reasons, uh, it, GLP-1 receptor analogs have really become sort of an anchor therapy for individuals who have metabolic risk factors. Now, in this background, now we are talking about liver disease, which is metabolic dysfunction-associated steatotic liver disease with significant fibrosis. And in this population, we now know that the semaglutide not only improved the NASH and the fibrosis, but we already know that semaglutide improves the cardiometabolic profile that surrounds the patient and contributes to the risk to the patient. 
So the patient who has the liver disease is also at risk for dying of heart disease, kidney disease, other complications of diabetes and obesity. And semaglutide will improve the entire spectrum. So this carries the potential for becoming an anchor therapy for people with uh, MASH who have started uh, scarring down their liver and with liver targeted therapies being layered on top of this for those who have either very advanced fibrosis and rare combination therapies may be considered or who have who are intolerant of uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists. Well, as I mentioned, this is an ongoing trial. So we are continuing to follow up uh, this population with the idea of uh, demonstrating that these short-term improvements in liver histology will result in long-term improvements in not only liver-related outcomes, but all the other cardiometabolic outcomes in this context as well, further nailing down the evidence base needed to support GLP-1 receptor agonists as a anchor therapy for MASH. I think it is important to also note that there already is one drug that is conditionally approved in the U.S. Uh, for MASH with significant fibrosis, which is the exact same population we've been talking about. And this drug is resmeterone, which is a thyroxine beta receptor agonist. And I think additional studies are needed to demonstrate the relative utility of uh, GLP first versus and adding resmeterone on top of that, and or going resmeterone first and adding GLP one receptor in to identify subpopulations who might benefit more from one versus the other uh, to better. Uh, understand, uh, you know, uh, which patients should be managed in with which drug and in which sequence, uh, because that still has not been established uh, in an evidence-based manner. So this will be a critical element of future direction for the field as more drugs come on uh, line, uh, including semaglutide for the treatment of MASH.